children how are you all how do you find the lesson body movements we have finished part 1 part 2 yesterday we have learned so many things about the human skeleton isn't it how many bones are there in an adult wood they are 206 bones in an adult wood and the framework of the bones is known as the skeleton and we have seen the skeleton system consists of the human skeleton consists of six main parts that is the skull the backbone in other words it is called the spine or the vertebral column the rib cage the shoulder bone the hip or in other words it is called pelvic bone and the limbs and we have learned about vertebrae so the backbone consists of many small bones what are they called they are called vertebrae the backbone consists of how many but vertebrae 33 vertebrae isn't it and we have learned about the skull skull also is made up of many bones joined together and it is protected by a very important part of the body that is the brain isn't it and we have learned about the muscles the contraction how the example i have given about the fist make a fist with one hand bend your arm at the elbow and touch your shoulder with the thumb i showed you the slide that is figure 8.17 do you see any change in the upper arm touch it with the other hand you observe the solen region that is called muscle and the bulge why it is bulge due to the contraction what do you make what do you mean by contraction it became smaller in length so like that we have learned when contracted the muscle becomes shorter stiffer and thicker and it pulls the bones so muscles work in pairs when one of them contracts the bone is pulled in that direction the other muscle of the pair relaxes so to move the bone in the opposite direction the relaxed muscle contracts to pull the bone towards its original position while the first relaxes so a muscle can only pull it cannot push so two muscles have to work together to move a bone we have seen that in figure 8.17 now tell me are muscles and bones always required for movement how do other animals move do all animals have bones what about earthworm or a snail so let us study the third part of the body movements that is the joint of animals what it is <coughs> the joint of the animals so first we are going to see the earthworm page number 73 activity 5 now observe an earthworm moving on soil in a garden gently lift it and place it on a piece of blotting or filter paper take the earthworm which is moving in the soil in a garden and where you are going to place it you are going to place it on a piece of blotting or filter paper and observe its movement see in figure 8.1818 movement of the earthworm these are the movement of the earthworm 
so observe its movement now is it different from that on the paper in which of the above two surfaces do you find that the earthworm is able to move easily so the body of an earthworm is made up of many rings joined end to end how is the body of the earthworm made up of the body of an earthworm is made up of many rings joined end to end an earthworm does not have bones an earthworm does not have bones it has muscles which help to extend and shorten the body so during movement the earthworm first extends the front part of the body keeping the rear portion fixed to the ground then it fixes the front end and releases the rear end okay it then shortens the body and pulls the near rearer end forward this makes it move forward by a small distance repeating such muscles expansions and contractions the earthworm can move through soil its body secretes a slimy substance to help the movement so how does it fix parts of its body to the ground under its body it has a large number of tiny bristles what does it have large number of tiny bristel bristles means what hair like structure protecting out the bristles help to get a good grip on the ground the earthworm actually eats eats its way through the soil its body then throws away undigested part of the material then it eats those this activity of an earthworm makes the soil more useful for the plants so joint of animals first we have seen the earthworm how is the body of the earthworm made it is made up of many rings joint from one end to the another end so during movement the earthworm first extends the front part of the body keeping the rear portion fixed to the ground then again it fixes the front end and releases the rear end then shortens the body and pulls rear end forward so this makes move forward by a small distance so repeating such muscles expansions and contractions the earthworm can move through the soil and then its body secretes a slimy substance to help the movement and you see that under its body it has a large number of tiny bristles bristles is hair like structures projecting out and the bristles are connected with the muscles the bristles helps to get a good grip on the ground the earthworm actually eats its way through the soil and it bodies then throw away the undigested part of the material that it eats so this activity of an earthworm makes the soil more useful for the plants is that clear for you do you have any doubt you just write and keep in a rough note book okay 
the next comes the snails activity 6 what is this it is a snail activity 6 page number 73 have you seen a snail in your garden or in the field how what is the structure of it you see top of its back rounded structure can you see this is the rounded structure this is the body of a snail so observe a snail in your garden or in a field that is figure 8.19 this is called what is this called the shell and it is the outer skeleton this is the cell and it is the outer skeleton of the snail but is not made up of bones the shell is not made up of bones the shell is a single unit and does not help in moving from place to place it has to be dragged along place the snail on a glass plate and you just watch when it start moving carefully lift the glass plate along with the snail over your head then observe its movement from beneath beneath means below what do you find you find a thick structure and the head of the snail may come out of an opening in the shell the thick structure is its foot the thick structure is its foot made up of strong muscles now carefully tilt the glass plate the way motion of the foot can be seen so is the movement of a snail slow or fast as compared to an earthworm so the movement of the snail is very slow you can observe it is very the explanation of the snail is very short the shell it is the outer skeleton of the snail the shell what you see on top of its body it is the outer skeleton of the snail and it is a single unit and it does not help in moving from place to place the snail has to drag it so a thick structure and the head of the snail may come out of an opening to the shell the thick structure is its foot made of strong muscles so the movement of the snail is very very slow now next we'll move to the cockroach okay have you seen cockroach where all do you find the cockroaches you find in the kitchen in the toilet room in the bedroom or outside the house you have seen the cockroaches so we'll see the activity 7 that is page number 74 now observe a cockroach that is figure 8.20 this is the slide of an cockroach so cockroach have we observed it walks and climb as well as fly in the air they have three pairs of legs how many pairs of legs they have three pairs of legs and two pairs of legs they help in walking and it has two pairs of wings attached to the breast region the leg and the breast muscle help in moving they help in moving climbing and flying a cockroach 
moves with three legs at a time okay then this type of movement is called the tripoid joint what it is called tripoid joint you can see page number 74 figure 8.20 so there are two pairs of wings attached to the body behind the head the cockroaches have distinct muscles those near the legs move the legs for walking and the body muscles move the wings when the cockroaches fly so this is all about the cockroach the next comes the bird the next comes the bird so shall i revise once again the cockroach there are figure 8.20 cockroaches walk climb as well as they fly in the air they have three pairs of legs they help in walking the body is covered with what it is covered with hard outer skeleton this outer skeleton is made up of number of plates joined together and that permits the movement to walk climb and to fly there are two pairs of wings attached to the body behind the head the cockroaches have distinct muscles those near the legs move the legs for walking the body muscles move the wings when the cockroaches fly the next comes the birds have you seen the birds we see different types of birds flying in the air they walk on the ground and some birds like ducks and swans also swim in the water the birds can fly why the birds fly because their bodies are well suited for flying their bones are hollow and light the bones of the hind limbs are typical for walking and perching the body parts of the four limbs are modified as wings and the shoulder bones are strong can you see this is the skeleton of a bird the shoulder these are the shoulder shoulder bones are strong the breast bones are modified to hold muscles to muscles of flight which are used to move the wings up and down so this helps the wings to move up and down this is all about the bird so what are the birds they are you see many kinds of birds they were some birds fly in the air they walk on the ground and some birds like ducks and swans they swim in the water and why the birds are adapted for flying because their bones are hollow and the bones are light and the bones of the hind limbs are typical for walking and perching so the bony part of the four limbs are modified what as wings and the shoulder bones are strong the breast bones are modified to hold muscles of flight which are used to move the wings up and down you can see the skeleton of a bird on page number 74 figure number 8.21 now next comes a fish now how many animals we finished we finish joint of animals first we have completed earthworm second snail third cockroach fourth bird and the next come fish many are fond of fish 
isn't it some eat and it is good for the health vitamin a is present in the fish now do this activity make a paper boat put it in the water and push it it push it with one arrow and pointing forward you can see in figure 8.22 a what you have to do you have to make a paper boat and what else put it in the water and push it with narrow one with one arrow pointing forward that is figure 8.22 a did it go into the water easily ha huh? did it go water easily now hold the boat sideways and push it into the water from the broad side see figure 8.22 this is playing with the boat this is the b part now are you able to make the boat move in water when you push it from this side have you noticed that the shape of a boat is somewhat like a fish can you see in figure 8.23 8.23 the head and the tail the head and the tail of the fish are smaller the head and the tail this is the tail this is the head they are smaller than the middle portion middle portion you see it is broad and it has like stream like lines and uh, it is called the body tapers at both the ends this body shape is called streamlined what it is called it is called stream line the head and tail of the fish are smaller than the middle portion of the body so the body tapers at both ends this body shape is called stream line the shape is such that water can flow around it easily and allow the fish to move into the water now the skeleton of the fish is covered with strong muscles during swimming muscles make the front part of the body curve to one side and the tail part swings towards the opposite side got it what it is the skeleton of the fish is covered with what strong muscles and during swimming in the water what happens the muscles make the front part of the body curve to one side and the tail part swings to the towards the opposite side then the fish forms a curve as shown in figure 2.8.24 can you see the curves here near the tail so the fish forms a curve as shown in figure 8.24 then quickly the body and tail curve to the other side and this makes a jerk and pushes the body forward a series of su such jerks make the fish swim ahead this is helped by the fins of the tail so this is the importance of the fish so what did you learn in the fish the fish is having the body the head and the tail of the fish are smaller compared to the middle portion of the body the body tapers at both the ends and this shape is called what streamlined and the skeleton of the fish is covered with strong muscles during swimming 
muscles make the front part of the body curve to one side and tail part swings towards the opposite side you can see in figure 8.24 page number 75 then what happens to the body of the fish the body and the tail curve to the other side and this makes a jerk and pushes the body forward like that a series of such jerks make the fish swim in the water so what are the breathing organs of the fish the fins are the breathing organs of the fish okay so fish also have other fins on their body which mainly help to keep the balance of the body and to keep the direction while swimming did you ever notice that under water divers wear fin like flippers on their feet to help them move easily in the water you might have seen in national geography how the body streamed body shaped helps the fish to swim in the water isn't it so they help the fish fins they help the fish in steering balancing and stopping in the water the tail fin also helps the fish to move forward in the water so this is all about the fish now shall we move to the snake how do snakes move many have seen the snake in their neighborhood or in the garden or in the park or in the zoo you might have seen the snake how does the snake move the snake slither does it move straight have you seen moving straight no snakes have a long backbone they have many tiny many thin muscles they are connected to each other even though they are far from one another muscles also interconnect the backbone ribs and skin the snakes body curves into many loops each loop of the snake gives it a forward push how by pressing against the ground against the ground since its long body makes many loops and each loop gives it this push the snakes move forward very fast but not in a straight line so we have learnt this is the movement of the snake figure 8.25 page number 75 so we have learnt about the use of bones and muscles for the movement of different animals now in this chapter pehli and bujo have many questions in their sacks about the different movement in animals you like to know the different movement in animals you watch natural geography in tv channel you will see the amazing animals how they move how they body parts are their colors their fibers feathers colors understood now the ancient greek philosopher aristotle have you heard aristotle he is the ancient greek philosopher named aristotle in his book gens of animals asked himself these questions what are the questions he asked himself why do 
different animals have the body parts have the body parts that they do not have and how do how do these body parts help animals to move the way they do and what is the similarity differences in these body parts between different animals how many body parts are needed by different animals for moving from place to place <coughs> why two legs for human beings and four legs for cows and buffaloes many animals seem to be having an even number of legs why why is the bending of our legs different from that of our arms so many questions and perhaps we have looked for some answer through our activities in this chapter and we need to look for many more answers so till here we have completed our body movements the third part of eight first part 10 questions are given second part 10 questions are given and third part two sorry second part 14 question answers are given did you answer so first part 10 second part 14 24 and this third part i'll be giving another 10 so total you are having how many questions 34 questions in rough book only have you practiced the skeleton in the rough note book so when new lessons are taken read the lesson again and again and explanation part of it questions are given find out the read and listen to the explanation and find out the answer please note that you have to write these question answers in the rough book only have you completed all the science activities how i have given maintain that record in the gender science file maintain a file the date will be mentioned for the submission that time you have to get those activities okay children please don't waste the time be ready for fa2 test and first semester exam don't waste the time okay children bye see you in the next class so first semester portion is over keep revising thank you children